Scott. Happy 2020. Uh, and you as well, Dave. How are you? This is 2020. I'm doing well. Good. Good. So did you see the Mandalorian? I did, yeah. You did? Yeah, me yeah. too. What do you think? I I liked it a lot. Um, but, okay, I, I think it's great. I, I say good. I, I think B plus, A minus. Um, yeah. yeah. I think it's a good nostalgic feel to, like, like what Star Wars originally kind of is. That Rogue One grittiness. To me, I yeah. feel, I don't know about you, but Rogue One was kind of my favorite of the Disney one. I, uh. I liked Rogue One. I wasn't quite sure. It, it was a little dark for me. Yeah. It was the first movie that made me hate a rebel and feel bad for stormtroopers. And I wasn't sure <laughs> I was comfortable with that. But yes, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it, it's a new... I think there was more world building in The Mandalorian than there was in the movies. Yeah, certainly the new movies, yeah. yeah. It makes me curious, but also excited about well, what's happening six years after Return of the Jedi. Well, that's the first thing I love is the time frame. I love the New Republic. And the one thing I will never forgive the new trilogy, Force Awakens, for is skipping the New Republic entirely. Look at that little, you know, before the laser hit. That's it? <laughs> we get to see the New Republic on a balcony, and then they're all gone? <laughs> yeah. No, but without getting into that again... Um, I love the New Republic. I love that era of Star Wars. Um, and even though the Mandalorian takes place on the Outer Rim, so you don't you don't see a lot of what's going on in the core, mm. I love the fact that it is the time of the New Republic. People talk about the New Republic. I love that episode with us with the X Wings show up. I love the fact that people yeah. recognize them. And they're like, oh crap, X Wings! <laughs> I think that was, that was great. I loved seeing that little bit of the New Republic. Was it, it just like that one guy that was in that prison ship? He kind of has the old school helmet. Yeah. And he's just there. Yeah, yeah. I really like, like I'm just that. getting coffee. <laughs> I'm just yeah. doing my job. Yeah. I love that guy. You know, yeah. I felt really I think, like I saw another video where that guy is a voice actor for Anakin from some Clone Wars. Really? I don't know. I think. <laughs> you got to check me on that. So, I don't know. But anyways, there's a lot of, there's a ton of Easter eggs yes. in The Mandalorian, which yes. I think is cool. Um, Except for the bit where they made the Christmas, the holiday special canon. There's, well, I forget what, but there there are some links to the Mandalorian and the holiday. They mentioned special. Life Day, and I went, yeah. "Oh God, no!" Well, now I have to acknowledge the existence of the holiday special. They kind of make fun of themselves with, um, like in, in the last episode, the stormtroopers. The stormtroopers that can't hit anything. <laughs> and I, I, love heard, those I was like, two "Is guys. this really happening?" But it was funny. I love that he looks at the gun. What's wrong with this thing? Yeah. So it, kind of, it was like this fourth wall, almost. Almost, yeah. Three and a half wall. I like that. Now, I, I thought um, it was really funny. And I, I love the fact that, you know, when he looks at the gun, I yeah. thought, well, maybe they just have crappy equipment. That actually fits. You know, yeah. with the with the whole philosophy of the Empire, TIE fighters aren't great, but we're going to make, you know, a trillion of them and we'll win by force of numbers. Stormtroopers aren't great. They don't have the best equipment. Their armor is useless. Very Soviet, very communist. China. But we're gonna make <laughs> a ton of you know a trillion of them, and then we'll and then we'll win because we have so many of them. That's a very realistic cheap. way. Yeah, yeah, is that maybe it's not the stormtrooper? They have faulty. Maybe weapons. his gun didn't work. He's like, what the heck's wrong with this thing? I don't know. <laughs> but then in New Hope, Obi Wan says these marks are too accurate for. Okay, so that's the thing. When stormtroopers aren't on screen, they're the the Waffen SS. They're freaking amazing. Like that's like the last episode. Yeah. They come across all these dead Mandalorian helmets, yeah. and we're supposed to believe that a bunch of stormtroopers did that. Mm. Not any stormtroopers I've been seeing. I mean, <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. It's How like, did that no, happen? There's no cameras. Let's be really good. Yeah, exactly. The stormtroopers are yeah. great. They're all really shy. That's yeah. the problem. They're, 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 that's why they wear the helmets all the time. It clearly doesn't protect them. They're just shy. You know, and, and, and so when people are looking at them, they get flustered and they mm. can't hit anything. But if they're off screen, they're awesome. <laughs> so the other thing with The Mandalorian, it has a good balance of comedy and drama. Yes. Which the movies, I think, failed in a lot of uh, cases. Last Jedi jokes every two minutes, I felt. Not even, probably every 30 seconds. Not good jokes. And <laughs> so when there was a serious part, 
you couldn't take it seriously. Right. Mandalorian, right. um, right off the bat, we start, he's mysterious, but you can tell there's some moral, um, he has a moral compass. Yes. And he's, he's going, there's just enough comedy with, like, Baby Yoda is naturally the star I love Baby Yoda. of this. Are you sick of him yet? Because no, he's, he's fantastic. Well, he's memes everywhere. Oh, I'm sick of his memes, but I'm not. That's not his yeah. fault. Um, he's cute, you know, and I don't think it would have worked if they made him CGI entirely. Like, I think there's some scenes where he's CGI, I but love, he's like a puppet. I love the fact that they're using the puppetry yeah. again, even in even in the um, even in the new trilogy, like mm. uh, Last Jedi. My favorite bit of that was Yoda. Yeah, yeah that's a that's a puppet Yoda. I love puppet Yoda. He just seems so much real. So yeah, there's something real. practical effects like that all I, around. I no love practical what, effects. It, yeah. It's just more aesthetically pleasing yeah. to the yeah. audience. I think there's a scene with Werner Herzog who plays the client, the Imperial client. Yeah. And He's great. there was there was a take where I think they asked him like, okay, we want to do another one with, but we're gonna have a CGI one, and he said, get the puppet. He like <laughs> would only do the scene with the puppet. He's because he's a director himself. He. And Bring me some puppet. Yeah, <laughs> directing movies right. himself. He's like, you're gonna get so much more value out of having it there, and that goes across the board. Yeah, no, I, um, I think it's great. But yeah, the mystery of the show is what really makes it. And you know, again, I think the show is good. It's great, and that's what worries me because <laughs> Disney Lucasfilm right now, they're probably panicking with the rise of Skywalker after the Last Jedi Solo. These movies, we can argue what we want about them, but financially, they're not where Disney wanted it to be. Sure. And right now, The Mandalorian is their baby, so I think they're putting all the cards in that. It's not so much, you know, John Favreau, I think, is a great producer. Um, I don't think he's perfect. He's He directed, what is it, um, Cowboys and Aliens, I think. He directed, oh, he directed okay. some other movies, but he's an executive producer, so yeah. I think he's keeping that balance. And that spirit of uh, a lot of the stuff in the Marvel movies of balancing drama and comedy and having it exciting, that Western feel. Um, but it's just the higher ups at Disney where I think the problem, like the Mandalorian, is the only reason why I have Disney Plus. And yeah, me too. <laughs> I mean, how many how many times can I watch Ducktales? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. a lot. Well. Yeah, they have dark wings. So now as well. I think they're coming out with an Obi Wan show and a Darth Maul one. I, I heard. I don't know what else. Um, but the series are fine. But it worries me because to keep people subscribed, you have to keep showing. Yeah. And they don't yeah. know how to end it. Is my worry uh. where maybe I'm freaking out? I don't know. I don't know. I'm enjoying the ride. I'm, I'm really pleasantly surprised yeah. um, because when I first heard about it. I um, I never really liked Boba Fett. Um, Why did you like Boba? Fett? <laughs> I don't like Boba Fett. Okay, he's okay, but um, I don't think he deserves his reputation at all. I, on screen during he's mysterious. That's it. I mean, but so is Bib Fortuna. I mean, you know. He doesn't look as cool. Okay, but that's all he has. That's all. He, that's all Boba Fett has. He looks he has cool. rope. He has rope. <laughs> <laughs> he comes on, he has one good idea, he follows Han, then he makes a phone call, and then he dies in a pit. That's what he does on the movie. But he comes back, because I think, okay, end of episode five, The Mandalorian, this is the one where they're on Tatooine. Yeah, someone comes walking up. And I think those feet is Boba Fett. Maybe. Just saying maybe it, because he has that spur sound effect. Yeah, Or like possibly. a change in his pocket, like maybe. when he walked into the dinner scene in Empire. Yeah, maybe. Next but, to I don't know. Um... I, I just anyway I don't really particularly like him, um, so I was worried when they were gonna do a whole series about the Mandalorian. I was happier oh when I found out it wasn't gonna be Boba Fett, okay, a Mandalorian. But I don't really like bounty hunters. Mm. I mean, I like I, they're okay as a character. I like villains and everything, but the problem I always have with bounty hunters and mercenaries and assassins is that. Often a show wants me to respect them as heroes because they have a code of honor. You know, if your code of honor is being true to a, a contract to kill somebody for money, you're a bad guy. I don't, I don't yeah. you know, the fact that you don't break your contract to kill someone for money doesn't make you better. It makes you a bad guy. So I was worried about that. But right at the very beginning, 
you know, where he, where he, you know, finds Yoda, baby Yoda, or baby whatever it is. And then, um, you know, and then he well, goes... We're building up, because at the beginning, it kind of shows what you're talking about, yeah. where he has to take that blue guy in on that, it looks like an icy tattooing yeah, or yeah. something. And that blue guy at the bar, he's like, I can take you in warm or cold, yep. I think he says. Warm or cold, that's And okay. so we stick him by that, and you know when he sees baby Yoda, there's something in him as a child, as we're seeing in these flashbacks. Right, right. And we see the Mandalorian saving him. So th there's something there, that very lone wolf and cub sure, yes. type of relationship. Yeah, and he's got kind of a Han Solo arc. Right? Yeah. When you first meet Han Solo, who is this scruffy looking nerf herder? He's a scoundrel, he's a bad guy, he just shot somebody under the table, you know, but then he turns out to be a good guy. So, the other thing I like, even though we um, went into that cave of that innocent big rhino creature and took it <laughs> Killed egg, it for its like, egg. It, it showed that he was vulnerable, that he's also very human under the armor. Yeah. Because he's not all suave and perfect and can't kill anything he comes in contact where he still gets hit he gets knocked down yep he gets beat up a lot and i think that on top of the emotional stuff makes the show really grounded i like the other characters yeah. what's your name the um shock trooper cara dune amazing <laughs> she's great I, a crush I, mean, on her too. I love her and i love um, the fact that for once we have a, a female fighter that isn't this skinny little kickboxer. Yeah, she, she's every not like time, ten pounds. Yeah, every and, time there's kind of yeah, a femme fatale, they say, "Oh, yeah. how are we gonna make this female yeah. really dangerous?" Oh, we'll keep her nice and skinny and petite, and then we'll just give her these ridiculous karate moves. It's, it's just mean, unrealistic. It's nothing yeah. against that. It's yeah. just no. It's it's fine. I just I'm sick yeah. of seeing it. I love seeing you know the there's shock nothing trooper. Wrong she looks with, like yeah. a shock trooper. Exactly. And <laughs> And she's still attractive. She's still attractive. That's yeah. the whole point. And a great character. She's um, fantastic. I really like her. And I love the fact that she's from Alderaan. And, the, yes. and I love um, yeah. I love the scene where Mondo says, it's not a warlord, it's an imp. And she says, I'm in. And she's thinking, because those bastards blew up my planet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, the other thing, you know, I know you didn't like Rogue One. Well, well, it has, yeah. it has, yeah. I like some of it. <laughs> I, I agree. It was kind of the least of the worst. And, but one thing I feel it did do good is when it handles droids, um, was it K2? No. Yeah. The, yeah. Right. And the same thing with the IG droid that gets reprogrammed in this. I love the IG droid. I the, love the K2. The whole self-sacrifice thing. Yeah. They do really well. Yeah. Um, again, a lot of those things, I think it comes together nicely. My nitpicks, and these are only nitpicks, I think the soundtrack could be way better. I think there's points when... Baby Yoda, for example, does the Force for the first time. We needed that Star Wars theme. Yeah, I think, it's, I think they were afraid of, of tying yeah. it too closely to the saga movies. But, but like, the Force has a theme music. And I felt so. that's what was, Rogue yeah. One was missing as well. Yeah. Like when they first show the Empire, have the Imperial March. Yeah. And I think that's the one thing the, the show is missing a bit. Um, I got a little worried when episodes four, five, and six were kind of... It felt Formula Network TV were... New problem, meet good characters, bad guys, Baby Yoda does something cute. Sol Mando solves problem, rinse and repeat. But. Well, I think those worked really well. Um, I think if a plot is all episodic, I mean, if a show is all episodic, then you yeah. start thinking, well, what? nothing changes, what does it matter? But if a plot, if a show is nothing but plot, then it gets kind of exhausting. So I like a mix of, mm -hmm. you know, the overarching plot plus individual episodic yeah. um, episodes. And I think it worked really well. You mentioned um, Lone Wolf and Cub. So that's what happens. Yeah. There's a lot of episodes in Lone Wolf and Cub where he's you know got his overarching goal, but sometimes mm. it's, I gotta go save the village. And a lot of the old Western series, yeah. they were just yeah. like that. Um, the other nitpick, I thought they removed his helmet too soon because mm. part of, and some people argue this, like, well, we already know what the actor looks like. I'm like, that's not the point. Mm. It's that I think they could have done that scene the same way where he removes it, but we have the IG droid in front of us, the audience, blocking us. Yeah, So they possibly. still essentially did the same thing. It's only because I kind of rather have him, like, let's say him and the shark trooper have um, more of a relationship, or he has a relationship with someone else. So when he does it for someone who's human and he breaks that yeah. because they mean more, yeah. it's just going to feel a less. It's kind of like when... 
in Marvel Endgame when Captain picked up Thor's hammer. It was great, but if you remember back in Age of Ultron, when the Vision picked it up really quick, just for a quick laugh, it kind of made it that much less. It's like oh, when I see. Yeah, the more okay. you do it, the something that's like, oh, this never happened, it, the meaning becomes less and less. And that's I don't want I don't want season two to be him with his helmet off the whole time. No, well, I <laughs> well, I don't think it will be because I have two thoughts. One, I love the loophole of I'm not a living thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Two, and this is, um, you know, completely outside the story. I think the actor probably wanted his face on screen. Well, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm I'm an actor. I'm I'd like to, yeah, look at the camera and show the world who I am. So, I just think yeah, there's a time and place. But hey, we'll, yeah, that's okay. We'll see. I did like we were talking one time about the um, the episode with Bill Burr when they have to go on the New Republic prison ship and yes. you, you brought up a great point about why like why have okay the droids are the security so why have oxygen lights like have it freeze and it made so much sense i'm like yeah just have the cells have that exactly it's easy prison ship exactly it would make it 10 times harder to uh, to escape and 10 times harder yeah. to break into and droids don't need that anyway oh. but again this the, is just nitpicking the droids are rubbish in in that um they're not better or faster um, than humans, no. and there's no real point to having droids if they're not going to be really awesome. But that's not a problem with the Mandalorian. That's been in Star Wars from the very beginning. So, I mean, unless you're R2-D2 and you yeah. can do anything, <laughs> you're just kind Precisely. of... Precisely, yeah. I, um, the dro I love the IG droids. I've been waiting to see for the longest time, ever since Empire, when IG-88 is just standing in the background. He looks the, so cool. I love to, IG-11. To see him in action yeah. really just suck me into the show. No, he was um, fantastic. The um a few little nitpicks that I have, mm. strangely enough, center around him. Really? Yeah. Please. Well I mean, in the beginning of the episode, right, uh Mando is hired to bring back the child alive. Yeah. And uh, you know, the the, the ex Imperial says, Well, body hunting's difficult, I know, so if you bring it back if you can bring proof back that it's eliminated, I'll give you a lesser bounty. Mm. IG jumps straight into that. Like, mm. He sees the child and he immediately pulls up the gun to shoot it. Yeah, that's and a good point. he's already said he's going to split the bounty with Mando. So yeah. he's going to split a smaller bounty. Yeah. Why doesn't he just capture the child? Anyway, and then. Um, Logic. Yeah, I know. And then, and then in, um, and then in episode eight, there in the end, uh, Quill is is uh, desperately trying to get to the ship, and I realized I was rewatching it yesterday. IG-80, IG-11's in that ship. Wasn't he looking out the window? Couldn't he see? If he'd come down, yeah, he could have no. killed those Imperials, and then they would have been fine. And then, he captures, the, he, IG-11 rescues the child. He had to go all that way. <laughs> but but then he takes the child into town. Yeah. I thought he was supposed to be protecting the there's child. The other thing, yeah, and, there's, and Mando does that a few times as well, where on... There's some parts of the show where he's very overprotective, or other people are protective yeah. of the child. Yeah. And other points where it's just like, let's just take it into battle with us. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, I, I, I love again, the bit this, this is why I give the show a B plus A minus. It's there's just other things I'm like, okay, if we could just fine tune these in the a second bit. season, just little just things. Think a little. Like, like Manda will say, okay, follow me in the town, and then you have a scene of, you know, he's walking yeah. into their bar, yeah. and the. The little, the little guy's going like this, real and thinking, yeah. okay, M M Mando's gonna outstrip him by mm. by thirty feet in, in two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Carry the kid, know. or anyway. But those are just real nitpicks. The you know yeah. nothing, nothing in the show is uh, a glaring break of continuity. No, it definitely um, each episode made me eager to see the next. Yeah. And I feel eight episodes was too short for season one. But it makes yeah. me eager to see what they're going to come out with. And again, the only thing that worries me, it's not so much the show itself, it's the higher-ups at Disney that too many cooks in the kitchen, what they did to the movies, I, hope they I just, don't... Yeah. They, I hope they learn their lesson and don't touch the show. Leave the show to the creatives. Yep. Let them do their thing. They're already building a lot of the Star Wars lore in this show. Yeah. And it makes me... Interested for season two. Oh, I'm very interested. I just kind of wish that Mando hadn't lost everybody. 
At the end of the show, he goes off by himself. Oh, no, we lost yeah. IG-11. Oh, no, we lost Kara Dune. Oh, we even yeah. lost Grief. I was really starting to like that guy. Yeah, but again, that's what kind of, in as a viewer, it just show, it tells me that they meant something. Yeah, That yeah. I, they weren't just nobodies where... It makes sense. He's supposed to go off by himself. He's a tribe of, a clan of two. Yeah. Right? You know, so that, that makes perfect sense that he's going to go off with... I am really looking forward to... Mando and the kid traveling the galaxy looking for yeah. Jedi or Yodas or yeah. whatever they're looking for. Which is okay. Well, here's one thing that bothered me. <laughs> one, yeah. one more thing. <laughs> um, I got one more thing too after you. I can't figure out, and this goes from all of the new movies. Mm -hmm. Actually, all of them, all of the new movies, all the new shows, everything after Return of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. I can't figure out what the populace knows about Jedi, the Force, and the Sith. Yeah. Because in, in Rise of Skywalker, suddenly everybody knows who the Sith are. Yeah. Which is really weird. And then in this movie, nobody has any idea who the Jedi are. Not or the Force. The Force. Nothing. <laughs> um, I could understand him not understanding the Force, yeah. but to not know the Jedi when the flashbacks, he's obviously around in the Clone Wars. Yeah. Um, that... Yeah, that bugged me a bit, too, where, okay, on one hand, he's this really smart guy, and the other hand, he's an idiot. Like, what is this child doing? Um, and, you yeah. know, I just don't understand, I, and I don't think there's any sort of, I don't think there's an answer. I, I think um, because they threw out the extended universe, and they're just kind of mm -hmm. making their own thing, I don't think they have a writer's Bible. I don't, I don't. I don't think they've made a definitive answer, and so I think people are just making things yeah. up. And that's, with this time off, I really hope if um, Bob Iger is watching this, <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy, if she's still around, which I doubt, but that, that they would do that in this off period where they start to build up a foundation of a, a resource material to go to, because that's the... I think the overall thing that I have trouble with with The Mandalorian that's more of a sad thing is I have to remember this isn't a universe where a few years later Luke Skywalker is going to try to kill his nephew because he's having a bad dream. The Emperor is <laughs> going to come back. So like where is the big thing that this can lead up to I'm trying not to think of. Yeah, you know, I can't. Are they using I Baby Yoda to the, clone Snoke's? I don't know. I can't think about the new movies. That's it's, it's the weirdest thing. I that's the thing I try not to think I've of got, when I know, watch the show. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I enjoy the show overall, but I'm like, damn it, it's still in that universe. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun. I really enjoy. It. I think it's it captures that yeah. that Star Wars magic. Yeah. You know, the characters are mm -hmm. are you know they have banter back and forth. Yeah. And, you know, Okay, I got a question for you. Yes. If if Disney Plus could make a Star Wars series on whatever you wanted to in the Star Wars universe, what would you have it be? Oh, goodness. Oh, well, that would be the New Republic. New Republic? I would want a show focused on how the New Republic restores order. Of course, it would be super sad because now I know that, uh, you know, in a few years, some giant super Death Star is going to blow them all yeah. up. I would like, even if they did just some, even if we knew it was CGI, if they kind of did a younger Leia and Luke and Han. The, the Jedi. At the, least if they had cameos. The Jedi Academy. If they had cameos, yeah. that'd be fine. They don't have to be main characters. Yeah. But yeah. I would like to kind of see that. All right, yeah. That would be interesting as a kind of anchor to sh tell us, the audience, what's going on in the universe. Yeah, with, with yeah. some new heroes, yeah. new people. See, yeah. what I always wanted, was, and this was right before George Lucas signed... Lucasfilm away to Disney yeah. is there was talks of a series of between episodes three and four with Darth Vader and the Empire and I've always wanted to see that from his point of view I think I've read some comic books set on there they are really some of them are really yeah. good but yeah. they are just so dark because yeah, literally dark. it's the story of Darth Vader killing everyone it's that scene in Rogue One <laughs> But a whole series. So I can see why they might have backed away from that. It might be difficult to make a movie out of Darth Vader just murdering yeah. Jedi. Just <laughs> they could have, I mean, I don't know. I think pe people would watch it. Yeah, yeah. Better than more Darkwing Duck and Rescue Rangers. I yeah. don't want to watch that other stuff on Disney+. Plus. I'm actually borrowing a friend's account. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the man, that's the thing, so... We'll see. We'll see yep. what happens. I don't know. Anything else? I'm good. Uh, 
Boba Fett will come back. It's not a matter of when. It's, I mean, it's not a matter of if. It's when. There you go. On my coffee. <laughs> um, no, I, I think I think that's it. Yeah. I'll think of something as soon as you shut the camera off. But yeah. yeah. I'm glad he let us back in the building. So yeah. Thanks yeah. for having us back. Oh, we're not supposed to be here. Whoops. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.